Hello. Okay. Uh, this evening, uh, those people who are interested to have dinner with us, we will be treating you all, um, not out of the conference expense, but something that out of us, uh, we like to have everybody here. So if you are not participating in the board meeting, come back at 6 o'clock uh, in that room. Uh, the room behind us is called Champagne 4. So we have that room for the board meeting until 5.30. So 6 o'clock, we should all wrap up. And then we'll meet everybody in that room. And then we walk all the way to the restaurant within this hotel. It's called uh, Mon Ami something something. But it's a French kind of restaurant. Uh, has all kinds of options. So we will right now reserve about uh, 22 seats there but they can actually seat up to 650 people if we want that. <laughs> so they have a conference room space or, or a private space for us if we need to. So please uh, talk to Jan if you are interested and she missed your name. So that's one of the things I like to show. Okay, uh, just a little back up of uh, the history of developing the AAPI hub. Uh, by the way, all these QR codes on the bottom of our banner, you can, if you know QR code or you use QR code, you can access uh, the site that we have developed. Right now it's published. Uh, we know that it's still not perfect yet, but we still want you to kind of, if you can, want to navigate with us while we're talking uh, uh, some other time. And if you need help, I think, uh, Dr. Munsef would be able to, or Singh can go to downstairs, uh, down there and help you navigate that. So, so this is a, uh, we call this an API community hub. Uh, started back in 2020, the concept has started. Um, 2021, we contacted uh, Estri, uh, asking them, you know, of this map technology that they have, which is very, very mod, very um, kind of the best in the top of the world type technology that you can zoom in, zoom out, get all these layers of information on the map. And that is something that we really would want to show off what we could do. Uh, next slide, please. So there's some questions of why we need it, what we envision, how we proceed and where we are now and what we need. So those are the topics that we'll cover quickly today. So why we need it, um, first of all, is AAUC's mission and role to connect all the different isolated communities. So having a data base to connect them would be very good. Right now, a lot of the data that we have of talking to other people are very incomplete. So nobody knows how many nonprofit AAPI organizations out there, or how many AAPI organizations are out there. How are we going to connect them when we don't know where they are? So that's one of the reasons we feel this database is really important and a way that we can access them is very important. So next slide. So what we envision is to be creating a uh, a community uh, which is the API community but it's a cyber one so we don't have to see each other face to face every day uh, we don't live in the same area but we do have a lot of things in common and we do want to kind of connect through uh, all these common needs that we have so one part is that seeing it as a network that is one of the important functions so you can see it is a hub but one of the spoke going out is to have that connectivity to different community and different uh, type of organization out there. The second thing I like to see is to get people visit this site all the time, that it has to provide some service for them. So my ambition is that we've got to have some really good information, good services that are there to attract people to come. Um, the third thing is, as a community, we always have a very a heritage of information that we want to store someplace. So this would be a great place where we have all these community connected, 
to store whichever the stories of heritage of different communities in there. And people can also access that and find out what other, other communities, you know, heritage and cultures are like. This would be my vision. We haven't get to that point, but we just demonstrate a little bit of what that could be. The fourth area I feel is important, like we get together, we need to have some sort of a call to action. If something emergency, some kind of really important things that all of us needs to know, then I feel we should be like a bulletin board, something that people can find out what's going on and how we can coordinate and all those things. So let's go to the next slide. So how we proceed, um, initially we proceed uh, very rudimentary. So we, we just said we don't know where to start, but we have like 3,000 data in our, in our, connection, in our um, MailChimp database. But some of them are individual information. Some of them are connected to organization. So just sorting that out was kind of um, takes some time and, and a little bit unwieldy. And we never feel that we cover everything in a very systematic way. Um, Singh is going to talk about what we did. Then I discovered that there was an IRS site. Who is this? Speak out. Okay, can you hear better? Okay, so what we did um, initially was going through our own database to sort through who are out there. Um, we felt that was very incomplete, so we found this IRS uh, data source where we could actually uh, download all the information uh, state by state, all the nonprofit, but they don't sort out what is a what is an API organization, right? So all these nonprofits, for example, in Minnesota, we have 37,000 nonprofits registered under Minnesota. So out of this 37,000, we get to sort them out and figure out which one is AAPI. So we use different keywords. Singh is going to talk about that. So we actually using that, the, this is the, they would provide all the, 990 information of all the registered organization, nonprofit organization in there. So that gives us a lot more complete data state by state. So now I think Singh is going to talk about, uh, he is the workhorse back here for me, um, but he actually gone through now about 10 states already. So today we're going to show just Minnesota and Nevada and I think uh, Munsep has done the Nevada state. So we do that, but then that doesn't give us who to contact. Uh, they gave a name in there, but there's no, IR, no URL site. So we have to find a URL site for each of the organization we, we selected. So uh, Singh is going to say by, you know, out of uh, 37, thousand nonprofit in Minnesota that is registered. We filter it down to about 440 nonprofits in there. And from that actually give us a lot of information and characteristics about what the AAPI nonprofit organizations are there. We start with the AAPI nonprofit organization instead of individually because we figure out, I kind of do some math and calculation and estimate that probably we have one to two uh, nonprofit per thousand API population. So it's not as unwieldy as somebody said, oh, it's 100,000, it's 200,000, we don't know how many. But when we go through these data, then we can actually see how many are in each state. And that co uh, correlate to how many API population in those states are. So it's kind of fairly consistent that we are somewhere around uh, one or two uh, nonprofit per thousand uh, API. So Singh did a lot of manual work in terms of going through every organization, find their, find their um, website, and then get all that information on their website as well into our database. Next, please. Then 
um, to show this data, we again use a developer called Blue Raster. They are the kind of the one of the recited good API, um, uh, the good uh, e ESRI developer that has been recommended to us through Astri. Astri is the big company that does all the map everywhere in the whole world. So they gave us a hub platform uh, because there are different platforms in, S in the Astri system called the GIS system, but the hub platform gives us all these different uh, capabilities within that. Um, then we would, we would publish with that the, the public information and uh, so all the information out there are not private at all, so we don't run into the problem of getting sued, uh, you know, publishing other people's information in there. And it also has an interactive dashboard uh, with the maps that we can see. The next one. So we did two pilot versions. One is the state of Minnesota, one is in Nevada, which has more complete data. We also had some old data from previously that we listed basically the big organization that we know like OCA, uh, UCA, um, we didn't have HAF at that time, um, and then APAPA. So those big organizations, we list out all the branches and all their chapters in there as well. So we have all together now 700 some data points uh, in this whole map. Ideally, we are thinking we probably would need to get to about 20,000 20, to 30,000 data points of all these different organizations. So we have their stats, we have their uh, relevant Im information. Singh is going to talk about just the Minnesota and also Nevada, right? And then, uh, but he has completed more than 10 states around. So, and we learn a lot about our API community, just plotting down what the statistics showed us uh, about the characteristics of those communities. So, Singh, you can take over. Is this room kind of cold and chilly? Yes. yes. So I have something hot to d discuss. <laughs> the HUB stands for hot. <laughs> and we think this is a very valuable project for the com community. And I got involved about a month ago, and uh, we, what I did is that I went through the IRS database, and I look at every single one of them, and decide whether they are AAPI or not. So out of 37,000 uh, Minnesota nonprofit organizations, 440 belongs AAPI. Now, I just want to stress, this is a pilot project, and I just used the Microsoft term, this is the beta version. So it may not be 100% accurate, because we will comb through everything again to make sure everything is, is, is correct. And the months that was when we work on, uh, work on Nevada, and, I, and then you, can you tell them how, much, how many organizations you go through? Well, I was uh, originally uh, in charge of Ohio. Ohio has, uh, uh, when downloaded, I had uh, more than 70,000 non-profit organizations. I read through those 70,000 lines, I found more than 800 organizations are uh, AAPIs. And then what I'm talking about this one, because uh, think about California, how many you will see, and then how much time, much time you need to do it. So I couldn't finish it uh, uh, Ohio, so I volunteered to the Nevada because we are uh, gathering here in Nevada. So I finished it quickly in Nevada whole line of the non-profit organization in Nevada is about 14,000. Among them, I found a little more, 100 non-profit organizations, and then uh, I finished it in time, so to incorporate into this uh, pilot project. So, so I look at the IRS database, 
and go through everybody. And then I think with Kaijin's help, she gave me a few more uh, Minnesota organizations. And I went through all of those too. And then I try to find, because the IRS database does not include the website, the URL. So I have to go look at, go search through various, many, many different websites and, and, and Google to find the URL. And some of them, they, they just don't have a URL number. You know, for example, if it's, if it's a, a, a foundation, they don't need to have a URL. And some of them only have Facebook. So if you go through our app, if you have a question you can ask me, then you'll find some of them don't have a website, some of them they have a website, some of them have Facebook. And IRS also tells you what kind of group it is, whether it is you know, religious, whether it is uh, uh, actually, they're, they're about all the way to Z. They, 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 they use alphabetical, A, B, C, all the way to Z. And, and, and they literally have, have, have uh, separated that for us, so it makes it easier. Okay. So if you look at our, web, look at our, our, our website, our, our hub, and you see all of those, and you can literally drill in so first of all, you got a big picture of the whole country, and you can drill it into different states. And from different states, you can go to county, and county you, you should be able to get into city. And, and it's all on the map. Uh, so so the system, the, 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 the system called is GIS. I think a lot of them are familiar with that. It's ge geographical information system. So that's all I have. So it shows all of the 7th organization on our database right now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And so if you, if you zoom in, and that depend on the right will change, because it depends on the region. So, so that is that. The second one is state. You can select what state you want to look at. Right now we have data on Minnesota and Nevada. And click on Minnesota, and uh, you should, I think, you should get, get to the whole state first. Yeah, get, get rid of the filter, get rid of the filter, reset. Yeah, so you can see there are 440 organizations, and on the right hand side is all, you can scroll up on the organization, okay. And you will be able to click on one and it will show you the information. Right now, we're not there yet. So that's where all the organizations are distributed in Minnesota. Okay. So, so, okay, now if you, okay, yeah, you can select anyone. So now you can see that is in, what, in Mora, and the organization, the main purpose is, what the heck is that? <laughs> Mental Health and Crisis Intervention. Okay. And the name is Santosha Recovery. Okay. And they are, they are active, and that is where the URL is. Okay. Yeah. And if you, okay, you click on, close that. Okay, if you click on the one in the middle, go to, go to no, go to, no, 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 there's one that's, yeah, a bunch in there. If you click on that, so it tell you there are three organizations in there, okay? And if you drill down furthermore, you will be able to see just that organization. Okay. Yeah, okay. So that's Minnesota. Okay. Now, let's go back there and and, and, and start select both Minnesota and Nevada. Yeah. Yeah. So now remember what SK said, we have 440 organizations in Minnesota and there's 573, so there's 133 in Nevada. And that's where Nevada is. Everything is in Las Vegas, basically, pretty much. 
and uh, I don't know what's, what's it. Is that Reno? If you click on that, you should see what, what organization is there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Carson City and yeah, Reno. Okay. So, so you have that. Okay. And as now there, there are all kinds of filters. So let's go back to the uh, beginning. So it's, yeah. Now these are basically a lot of them are from, from the RS data. So, so it include the revenue amount and everything you want to know. All right. So now you can s select the eth ethnic group. You may want to, yeah. Okay. So you can filter. So you want to find out, I don't, you don't want to find out, how, how about, uh, I think you have to, yeah. yeah. Yeah, those are other Chinese groups in Minnesota. Okay. Now, there's another group called Pan-Asian. Chinese group means that they serve mainly Chinese people. Pan-Asian could serve any peop, anybody from Asia. So it may include Chinese, Indian, Sri Lankan, uh, uh, Singapore, Malaysia. Yeah. So they, you see a lot more. Yeah. So. Okay. Okay. so if we go back to the dashboard, okay. if you scroll down to the bottom, no, 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 no. Yeah, to that, to the, uh, yeah, yeah. So this is, we show a lot of things on a, on a, on a graph or a chart. Yes. Okay. I cannot, I cannot see what's on there. So this is the distribution of uh, for, for Minnesota and Nevada. And uh, I'm sorry, I can't really see what's on the screen. <laughs> Okay. The blue one is Chinese. That is the uh, highest number, is like 19%. Uh, the next group would be Pan Asia, which is 15.9%. And then we call the Indian group, is about 11.3%. Mong group is about 10%. 0.1%, but that's two states altogether. So do you want to just show, select one state yeah. instead? Yes, you can. So if we reset it and re select just Minnesota. So the demographic distribution will be quite different. Right? Yes. So the largest group is called Pan Asia. Is 22.8 percent in here. So if you look at that, that's what that comes out to be. 
And then if you shrink this, then you will see it on the map where those are distributed, I think. Um, select just Minnesota here. Then that would be those 60 organization. That's Pan Asia, right? I think there yes. are other characteristics below too. So you can toggle that on this bottom, you can toggle it and it shows you other things. Like what's the main purpose of the organization? You have the highest group would be religion related. Then the second highest group will be arts and culture and humanity and then education and then human services and international foreign affairs and national security. So these are all like, you know, a distribution histogram chart. And if you click on this, you can actually see this de decreases. These are the ones that are religious or uh, religion related uh, organization in here. And if you click on not this and you click on this one, you see this nonprofit there. So you click on each one of these, then they pop out information about that individual organization with all this things that information we collected about them. So it's a very powerful tool, I feel, right? That, that we have um, available at our fingertips now. Do you want to say something more, Sim? Do you want to look at the, uh, the revenue on the, on, the, on, the, on the histogram on the bottom? Yeah, there's also yeah. revenue graphs yeah. too. So this is how, how many organizations are active, some inactive, some we don't know. This shows, I can expand this one. Um, this shows how many organizations, we take out all the zeros and one dollar um, type of asset organization. So what we have here is between 186,000 uh, up to no, hundred and hundred and eighty six dollar up to hundred and sixty thousand roughly. So we uh, have seventy thousand and a million? No, they are there there's also there's also decimal points here. Right. So this is only a hundred and sixty thousand. Up to hundred and sixty thousand. So most of the organization fall in this category. The, this low. graph is for under a million. Yeah, these, all these are under a million organizations. So they are mostly that. And there are some that are over a million, up to 15 million, I think. Yes. And then over 15 millions and so forth. There's one organization that is, or two, that is um, beyond that. I think if we scroll this, shut this down, make it small, they would actually show us where these organizations are too on this map. No, they don't relate, sorry. So I thought they Not yet. Right now I think we have too many categories selected. Yeah. Right. Right now we can, if we reset, then you're looking at 15 organization that's over a million dollar out of 700 some that we have collected information on. So I think these are very powerful tools that we just want you to demonstrate. It's not perfect yet. It's not um, the way that we want convenience and so forth. Um, definitely they have ability to link these distribution graph back to where they are on the map. Um, we haven't got that done yet. Yeah. Sorry. I just want to st stress that this is still a work in progress. Uh, as I say, it was a beta version. 
So are we good um, to show more? And the yeah. On the share information side, um, ideally we need to have a community calendar so we can coordinate our activities. And then this is the voting power base that was based on some time ago. Um, those data are not very current, but it does show you where the dominant API organized um, populations are resided. If we're looking at this, the Filipino is the highest population in Alaska, and so different types has different representation. So for the Indian um, organization, this will be the dark brown area. So if we want to see bigger scan, sh shoot it out then you can see whether most of the Indian populations are residing in different parts of the country and where the Chinese are populated in different parts of the country. Are they dominant uh, in those parts? Um, so besides the power base, um, it may not be very current because we didn't update that one. But this one is the latest census data um, up to 2020. So you can see for each state, they have a dominant, uh, what is the dominant um, population there. So you click on it in California, there's 39 um, million people living in this area in California. Out of that, uh, 5 million some are Asian, and then who is non-Hispanic and it makes up 14.6%. But some of the, um, we can actually read more on this too. So you can, you can drill down on this and, and, and actually see different counties and even down to the level, you know, by, by state uh, and so forth. So, so this is a very powerful tool for people who want to sort information. It's more than just a Rolodex. Of, of just collection of uh, organization there. So it's just want you to kind of experience with that and if you have questions, uh, you can kind of uh, contact me or uh, one of us here. But I just want to introduce our team. Um, she's helping us. <laughs> Yen is also helping us. So I basically probably want to turn back to the and finishing this up. Can we finish this up? The other. Okay, so let's just drill on this one. This is mostly um, white population uh, in New Mexico, right? Oh no, actually predominant race in here is Hispanic and Latino. And this is just the, the the API uh, group, right? No, it's all everything, the entire population here. So these are all really interesting data. And then if you go down even more, you can actually see more details in each one of the, um, of the counties in the state. So you can actually see a lot of information in this group. A specific um, Asian group is on this map where you can see, you know, California is the biggest group uh, of Asian and then New York and so forth and Dallas too uh, in that area. So um, if you want to click on, do you want to click on this and see? Uh, I thought you could. You can expand this and you can drill on on one or two, yeah, okay. So I would just want to wrap up, just want to perk your interest um, that we have, have a really interesting tool and we're teaming up with the best technology group of people that can provide that information to us. 
So I'm going to pass um, and tell you what we should do next, what we plan to do. Okay, so our plan is that we need to finish all 50 states with the API nonprofit. And then we want to establish an editorial board. Right now, a lot of this thing is very subjective. Uh, let me see, where do I do the current slide? Yeah. So, um, so we also need to develop something which is an AI kind of a search and update, which is make the data more current and easier to track. So what we need, I'll pass that to. Okay, so as you all can see that um, this is just, you know, what we're showing you is very in progress type of situation, but you can see that the power it can generate if we have a full blown database here. So it's a combination of um, public data, which is from the IIS, with some manual intervention, which, you know, uh, you, we do an online search, but you don't have to use that, I mean, um, if we are, ha I mean, if we have the capability of programming, utilizing the programming portion to automate that portion, you know, that part of it, you can see how powerful this is. Right now, we don't have that capability yet. So people, we need people like Singh and Munsab and Jan too, I know that she's helped with that. So they actually go into the website, you know, do a search based on the IIS data because the IIS data is not complete yet. So based on that, we drill in a little bit more and then we even have to check out some of the organization to make sure that it's correct. So you can see it's a lot of work to be done still, um, but what we're looking for right now is contributing partners so that we can share the roles and responsibility. I'm gonna take an example like APAPA. They have a network of nationwide with different chapters. So they can help with the manual labor of making sure that you know wherever that, that chapter is, they can have intern there to make sure that the, the information input into the system is correct. And then once that in there, we will have like a survey form where you can actually make any corrections once it's in there and the data being loaded is not up to date. So you can do that through that. So it's sharing the roles and responsibility, you know, once you become a partner is really um, the, the main focus of us making sure that what we're presenting is correct. As you all know, no matter how advanced technology is, garbage in, garbage out. So the data that we're collecting, we want to make sure that it's um, correct. And then we rely on the public to tell us if what's being presented is not correct. And then utilizing the community groups that we have here, you know, is part of the process as well. So, and then we need financial support. As you all know, this project started out with SK Vision and with a small, you know, contribution from CL USA, and you know, uh, for us to oh, they don't use okay. See, it's very small money amount that we, you know. So when I saw that, oh, we needed a few more things, so I contribute a little bit. So it just it takes a village really. But then in our, it's a catch twenty two because until we show you something, you don't know if it's going to work yet. But we need to have the tools in order to build that demo system, you know, it's a, you know, a prototype, but in order for, for us to make it credible to you, we need some work behind the scene first, and that's where I would, you know, that's what we currently need. So we share the ownership of the, the data itself, and then we share responsibility. So the second phase is we want I just talked about it uh, very briefly there, the users and the feedback, and if which site is not correct, you know, we will be able, because online data, public information might not be correct yet, because some of the chapters, or some of the organization might have folded already, and we don't know about that until we actually, you know, deal with them. So that's where keeping up the site information current is very important, because we don't want, API group or anyone utilize that site and then quickly realize that, hey, the information is not up to date and then they're not gonna come back again. We really, really want this site to be like a search engine for all API groups so that when you think about, 
oh, I just, you know, like I said, we just moved to this state and we don't know, you know, where to align ourselves with. So this list of API organizations and whether or not they're active and, you know, what kind of um, work in the community they do, everything is on one website instead of having you to do the Google search, you jump from this site to the other. And that's what we're trying to do here, you know, empowering the, our community to have all the information at your fingertip, especially on one centralized database. So the more we make it a place where, you know, it's just like when you do the search, you like Google because the more you come back, you know, the information just appear like that. If you're liking it and you come back more, as a result, we'll be able to grow our cyber community. So um, for those of you who are interested in trying it out, if you check out the, um, you know, if you hover your phone over that code there, it'll take you to the website. So the, the one on the right-hand side, AAPI Hub, that is going to take you to, you know, what we were showing you here. So you can really play with, you know, the variety of options that we have there. And then on the left side is the AAUC um, website for you to make the donations or help and support. If you have any questions, um, go back to SK and she'll be more than happy to talk to you with all the possibilities that we have about AAU, um, the, the hub that we're trying to build. So thank you very much. Um, I, I'm going to give the mic back to SK to close us out. So, um, we want to give uh, uh, the floor to the que a question and answer, but before that, I'd like Dan to kind of come up and talk about what he envisioned he can use this data for. Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, thank you, SK, for giving me a couple minutes. Um, I'm going to first talk about the hub, I mean, it's, it could be a very powerful tool. Uh, and one word that I, I would use in addition to the ones you use was communications. Um, we're communicating, it is cyber, but we're communicating and we need to communicate. And in this conference, I counted about 18 different workshops or, or um, panel discussions. Um, and there's a lot to absorb, right? A lot of nuggets of information. Uh, that we are likely to forget uh, when we leave. So a number of us have, have um, worked on a, a, um, uh, a, a program. It's not up and running yet. It's, it's still in theory. But we think it will dovetail very nicely with the Hub, with the hub project. We need data, right? Uh, AAPI data does a really good job. We need this kind of data. Um, it's macro data as well as segregated data, but then you need people to use the data. And so this kind of um, program that I just would like to, um, to uh, talk about for just one minute is, is what we call the AAPI Roundtable. Um, it is a communication collaborate, collaboration and communication system. Next. Okay, so what it is is getting people to talk to each other that are interested in their, in their, their own special interests because you can't force people to be interested in things that they're not interested in. You can't tell people to report to other people. And as we all know, unity is better, but it's hard. So let's go to the next step and, and figure out how we can actually get more unified. And to get more unified, you need to communicate and you need to work together. You can't work together one time. You need to keep working together. So we build a system. So this is a series of roundtables or just discussions, think of them as discussions, that continue on that are focused either on an issue. So it could be uh, uh, hate or it could be women's issues or youth issues or, or, or so, so uh, legal issues, education issues. It can be focused on the population ethnic group, women, youth. It can be focused on geography, east coast, local, national. Right? We're all separated by these factors, but if you get together and you use um, along your own interest lines, and then you um, 
you take all that information and you, you uh, synthesize it and you feed it back out to anybody who's interested and you keep doing it, then we will gather together uh, people and information and, we can, and ideas and action plans and then we'll execute the action plans. And if you can't execute because you don't have enough staff or, or financial resources, one of these um, round tables will be philanthropy. So we want to get the philanthropists together, and then we want to help the philanthropists uh, aim their funds to where we think are the most effective. So that's the idea. And if I've, I, I hope I piqued your interest. We are, I, sorry, I represent the 1990 Institute. It's mainly Chinese American. We want this to be Pan-Asian, right? So we're looking for partners in the South Asian community, Filipino, Korean, all, you know, all of them. Okay, we want to represent youth, women, so it's gender, professions. Professions don't talk to each other, right? Legal people don't typically talk to, let's say, Hollywood people or educators, and we need to cross-fertilize. Okay, so thanks very much. If you're interested, please let me know. Okay, am I, well, sorry. Next, yeah, just, just flat. So these are some of the, the issues, and then the next one, oh, forget it. Uh, okay, thanks, thanks very much. Um, one more thing that I want to uh, touch on the point where uh, Dan just talked briefly is that the powerful tool that we provided through the hub is that it's not just the AAPI data that we're collecting, it's the GIS system of S3 that is really powerful because it's geographically on the map. It, it tells us where the AAPI is and other group as well. So that's a very powerful tool for us to, you know, make a combination of what's available on a very strong and validated database already. So we're just finding out, you know, collecting more additional information to complement that and present it in such a way that group like ours here can utilize and be able to find what we need without having to be so silo thinking that we are the only one that needing that information. Just think about how um, effective it is for the community to really move forward knowing that you know data is available you know at their fingertips so um, I hope you con would consider it and then I hope that you know after playing with it a little bit you can see how important it is for us to build a tool like that for us to share I, I think we run out of time for the thing but uh, before everybody left I want to present this certificate of performance to our dear um, Polynesian member um, and friends. So may I ask uh, uh, Lucy to come? We'd like to have you recognized for the performance that you have done yesterday for us and the day before. We also have one for you as well. Thank you. We're very happy to have you here with Thank us. You. Thank you. Yes. I just want to say thank you to um, President uh, SK and the group for having us here this year's uh, conference. And uh, <coughs> we're surprised about this. And thank you very much for um, um, thinking of us. We have no idea, but we are very grateful to be here and very excited to learn a lot of different um, culture of our Asian and Pacific Island meet a lot of different faces and a lot of, we make a lot of friends and families. So we are very a part of all of us here today. 
and we will remember this and of course we will continue connecting with everybody that we have cards and our information I think everybody have my card I hope if you don't please let me know so I can send you our information so we can keep in contact um, Alaska is so far away from everybody else but we are very grateful to be here this year and we're looking forward for the next one that we will see each other again Bye -bye.